Before I begin, this is not an indictment against statins. This is mainly a group of researchers that look into the merchandising and marketing of statins on how certain things may have been over embellished and information withheld from the public which the public has a right to know. Second, before you make any changes to whatever, always consult your medical practitioner first. They are your partner and they're there to work with you. In the research, which I'm going to move very fast to push it into as little time as possible. Research called no association between bad cholesterol and elderly deaths. That's their words, not mine. In the citation research, which is not as kind as the public release, how statistical deception created the appearance that statins are safe and effective in primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease appearing online this month in the open access British Medical Journal. This research was done by award-winning international, award-winning international team of researchers, by the way. A lot of credibility behind the questions being asked in the following research. To give you an example of what the research we're concerned about, let's first look at the study in regard to as many studies, but I'm only going to cherry pick a few things out here because I have no choice due to the time limitations. Let's look at Lipitor. All right, Lipitor used to make a claim, or after Vastatin, that basically there was a 3% reduction, uh, sorry, 36% reduction in heart or the risk of heart attacks. Big sounding number. But that's what's called the relative risk reduction. What were the actual numbers? Well, the actual numbers were this. Of the people, basically uh, the placebo group, 3% had a heart attack. Of the statin group, 1.9%. What the marketers did was as follows. They took that 1.1%, you take that 1.1%, divide it by 3, and you're going to come up with a little higher than 36%, even though the absolute risk reduction was only 1.1%. Why is that number important? Because you don't know what the side effect risk is. Let me begin, or move forward, I should say. I would go through all that so you understand. It says, uh, moreover, there was no significant benefit in subgroups of patients at high risk of cardiovascular or cardiovascular heart disease, including those with diabetes, left ventricular hypertrophy, and vascular disease, or for patients aged 60 or younger, for those without renal dysfunction, and for individuals with metabolic syndrome. For women, there were no benefits at all. For women, there were no benefits at all. Indeed, there was a trend for worse, albeit non-significant effects. Finally, with no effect on either cardiovascular or non-cardiovascular mortality. I think that says enough right there. I don't have to explain any more than that. All right, now this is how they came up with the research. So, well, 1.1% difference between 3 and 1.9 being 36%. You got that, but let me give you a good analogy of what that's kind of like. You take a bunch of calculus students whose test grades are consistent 69. You give one group a rabbit's foot, the other group a magic penny. And I apologize for speaking fast, but I have to. They get retested. The rabbit group gets a 71, and the penny group gets a 72. Wow. The penny group got three points higher than 69. So, but the difference is this, between the penny group and the rabbit's foot group, three minus two equals one, and the, the students come by saying this, hey teacher, we actually take the one divided by three, we actually score 33% higher in the penny group as opposed to the rabbit's foot group. But when you hear 33% over 69, you think that means that they scored in the low 90s. No, our contraire, they only scored one point higher than the rabbit's foot group, which is 72. So you make the numbers sound better than they actually are. Reality, the absolute improvement in grades still kind of sucked. But to proceed, what about the side effects? Now here's where the researchers had the biggest, biggest problem because they could not get the data they needed on the absolute risk. So even though a 1.1% reduction in heart attacks may save untold number of lives, that's if there's no risks of death from other causes from taking the drugs. So the researchers wanted to see if they can get that information. Like, for example, side effects, central nervous system pathology, included mood and cognitive disorders, myopathy, cancer, and diabetes, and so on and so forth, the researchers go into. But this is what they said. The selective control over data handling, including detailed information regarding adverse events, events has led independent researchers to request open access to the clinical trial data, which the drug companies have denied. If the statin trials have been performed appropriately and objectively, why do the study directors restrict access to their findings? 
Now here is the real scary part. They have these commissions like cholesterol commissions and things like that which make recommendations for the general public. The research concluded with this paragraph. However, no clinical trial has shown any association between the degree of cholesterol lowering and the outcome using absolute risk statistics. But if the CTT recommendations are followed, almost all adults will be taking statins for the rest of their lives. That's something for you to ponder on your own. If possible, and I'll link the PDF file to the research so you can make your own decisions or at least present it to your medical professional to work together to come to a conclusion. And as time permits, we'll see if this study is protracted or if there's any other changes to it. If there is, I will gladly let you know. Again, this is Ralph Churchiano. I really do hope you find this information useful and I'm glad to see you all next week once again. Thank you. See you all then. Bye.